Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named Dormi's Perfect Math Class taken from the global round. This problem is an excellent problem which teaches you how to use the greatest common divisor and it will help you understand the property of GCD that the greatest common divisor of a set of numbers is the smallest number that can be expressed as a linear combination of the set of numbers. So this property is extremely useful. It doesn't show up much in competitions, but in this problem, it's really the only way to come up with the solution. So in this problem, we are given a set as containing positive integers. We can perform the following operations any number of times. We can choose two distinct elements from the set such that the first element is greater than the second element and insert the difference into the set. And we want to find out the maximum possible number of integers in the set or basically the size of the set. If we keep doing this operation as many times as we want, it's it can be proven that this number is finite mainly because the size of the set, the size of the elements is up to 10 power of 9. So obviously all elements will remain less than 10 power of 9 because each time we are adding the difference into the set. So that's why the number of elements will be at most 10 power of 9, which is a pretty large number. So you can't directly simulate this process of doing a brute force or a complete search and basically adding all the pairs of elements into the set. That won't work because the elements can be pretty large and the size of the set can be very large. So we we'll need to come up with a clever way of figuring out how to figure out which elements are in the set. And let's consider two examples. So in the first example, we have two elements one and two. And it's clear that from this first example, whenever we have the element one, we can take the largest element and subtract one from that. And we'll get one less than the largest element. So if you take a different example, if you take them to be two elements, or if you take them to be like uh, any number of elements, really two and one and 10, for example, then you can keep doing 10 minus one to get nine, nine minus one to get eight, eight minus one to get seven, all the way up till three, two and one. So in this way, you can get, so if if the initial size of the set was two and initially there were only two elements, you can convert that to a size of set, uh, to a set of size 10 and you'll print 10 as the answer because if the smallest number is one and the largest number is 10, then you can keep doing 10 minus one, then nine minus one, then eight minus one and so on. So we can realize that whenever the smallest number is one, we just print out the largest number because all the numbers from one till the largest number can be formed. However, if the smallest number is a different number, if it's five, for example, and the largest number is 25, then a similar logic holds true. If you start from 25 and if you subtract five, you can get to 20, then you can get to 15, then you can get to 10, and then you can get to five. So in this case, you can see that there are five elements and you may be tempted to think that you just take the largest number, which is an, like if you sort the elements, the largest number is an, the elements are sorted. So the largest number is an and the smallest number is a1. And you think that like everything from an, an minus a1, an minus two times a1, all the way up till uh, like an minus k times an or a1, all the way up till two times a1, three times a1, two times a1, and a1. So you may be tempted to think that this is the correct sequence, but there's a catch. What if a n is not divisible by a1? So in these two examples, it's clear that the last element is a multiple of the first element, which is why you can form all these elements. But uh, what if what if the last element is not divisible by the smallest element, or what if the the elements are or uh, what if the elements are something like 5, 11, 15. So what if the initial set was 3, n is 3, and this was a set s initially. Then it can actually be proven that there, there's a better sequence. And for that, you, you, can, you can see that if you do 15 minus 11, you can go to a smaller number. You can go to 4, and you can insert 4 inside. So if you initially, initially had n is equal to 3 
and if you had 5 11 and 15 then you can choose x to be equal to 15 and y to be equal to 11 and since 15 minus 11 is not in the set you can insert 15 minus 11 into the set and once you do that you can see that 4 gets added so now you have 4 5 11 15 and once you have 4 you can do 5 minus 4 is 1 so 1 gets added and then you're actually going to get every possible number from 1 to 15 because of the logic which I just said you can do 15 minus 1 then 14 minus 1 and so on so in this case actually the answer is 15 and not not 3 so uh, I mean not 15 5 and 10 you can get all numbers from 1 to 15 so over here our logic breaks and the reason why our logic breaks is because uh, because the GCD of these elements is equal to 1 so if the GCD of all these elements is equal to 1 that means 1 can be added to the sequence so notice that GCD is 1 that's why 1 can be added eventually to the sequence over here the GCD was 5 that's why 5 is the only number which can be added over here the GCD was 1 that's why 1 is the smallest number which can be added and in general if you think back to the learning target if you think back to the property which I wanted to make you familiar with in the beginning that property basically tells us when we can get the GCD the, the smallest number which we can get is the GCD we cannot get any smaller number that's why if you consider the second example where the elements were 5 10 and 25 the GCD of these elements is 5 so you cannot get a number smaller than 5 into the set S you can only get numbers which are greater than or equal to 5 and the reason why we want the smallest number the reason why it's optimal to get the smallest number into the set is because once you get the smallest number you can get every number which is a multiple of the smallest number so if you want me to explain with the help of another example let's say that the elements were something like 9 12 15 or 9 12 21 then you'll notice that the GCD of all these elements is 3 and this helps us because we can get 3 into the sequence so we can get 12 minus 9 to be 3 9 12 21 and based on this we can get every number from 21 up till 3 which is a multiple of 3 so you can get 18 then you can get 15 then you can get 12 then you can get 9 then you can get 6 and then you can get 3 by each time repeatedly subtracting out 3 from from a number in the set so you do so you do so you start with 21 subtract 3 then that, that gives you 18 then from 18 you subtract 3 you get 5 from 5 you subtract 3 you get 12 from 3, 12 you subtract 3 you get 9 6 and then 3 so in this way it's clear that if you you can form the gcd in some number of operations because the gcd is a linear combination and you can form all linear combinations and once you get the linear combination using some subtraction operations you can get every number from the gcd until until the end so this basically means that uh, in the end you can get g you can get 2 into g you can get 3 into g all the way up till a n by g into g so we know that since the gcd is the greatest common divisor it, it divides all of these numbers we know that a n by g is the last thing so 1 times g is the first thing 2 times g is the second thing all the way up till an times g which is the last thing so this basically means that the answer is essentially equal to an by g so so the problem basically reduces to just sorting the elements finding the gcd and printing the largest element divided by the gcd and i'll show you the code which implements the same idea if you have doubts on the proof of this you can either google this theorem this is called Bezoit's lemma it holds for two numbers but it can be generalized to the whole set and you can always comment down below and I'll explain it a bit further but for competitive programming purposes it's enough to like figure out the pattern that you're always trying to find the GCD of the sequence because the GCD is the smallest number which you can form and once you get some small number you can keep subtracting that small number from the largest element and you can get all the multiples of that small number into the set s so that's why the number of multiples of the small number in the set s is the answer which is given by 
1, 2, 3, all the way up till an by g. So the size of the set is an by g. So in the code for each test case, I take in the value of n, the size of the initial elements inside s. So the size of the initial set s. I take in these in, in, in a vector. It doesn't really matter. You could use the set as well. And I initialize the GCD to 0 because because GCD of 0 with any number with any number n is equal to n for all integers n. And I compute the GCD of all the elements in the array by doing the simple GCD operation. And in the end, I sort the sequence. So sort the sequence to find the largest number. Again, you could use something like uh, int g. So over here, you could use something like max c is 0. And you could say max c is maximum of max c with ei if you wanted to make the code shorter and if you didn't want to sort it. So you could print max c divided by g. Even this code works. And you can verify that this code does get accepted. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you have any doubts in any part of the solution, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.